Okay, so I guess I'm good to go. So welcome to this talk, PDF Secrets. It's hidden, you shouldn't be able to read it. Hiding and revealing secrets in PDF documents. So I'm Ange Albertini, the author of coreconvenient.com, which is about reverse engineering and visual documentations. And the problem is, so you need to remove sensitive elements from your PDF for public release and to know if they are actually removed and can someone reveal your secrets. It's not a new fact. So here, an article from Bruce Schneider from 2005. He was, as he said, he was even about to, about to mention that, but still some people need to know that. And here, one of the examples that is linked, plenty of real examples, so that's about Iraq stuff. And if you just uncompress and remove all the occurrence of space, RE, new line, because RE stands for rectangle, if you remove the 700 occurrences of that sequence in the uncompressed PDF, all the, or 99% of the black square are instantly removed. If you didn't know the copy-paste trick. So yeah, that's a real issue. And as Kurt spot, if you incompress and you check in the metadata, you have email subject, another redact job for you. <laughs> <laughs> so the important thing for me was the motivation behind this talk was that this is a talk, topic, though, so uh, revealing document elements in PDF, that was never really covered technically. And also I was asked the other way around, so I need to pretend that I didn't want to carry sensible information out, so I need to fake that, oh, they were accidentally still there. So how could you still do that? And then being able to easily re-enable them. And whether you don't want to, even if you don't want to hide to reveal hidden information or to, to exfiltrate information, then I still think it's a very good uh, fake excuse to just study the PDF internals and for me to introduce the PDF internals for the first time. And also, as uh, some friend noticed or insisted, uh, for CTF steganography flags, it's a very good uh, first documentation. <laughs> or it could give ideas for people to create new tools and everything. So as a reminder, it's about hiding PDF, hiding parts of the PDF document, not hiding information in the PDF file. I don't know if you're familiar with my work, but I made the POC GTFO issue released in CCC was a bootable PDF that I created. And then I did a PDF that was a JPEG, uh, an audio file. It was a APRS broadcast. And you could encrypt this PDF into a ping. And it was a zip. So hiding information in a zip, in a PDF file is nothing new, but it's not the point here. Here it's hiding, revealing elements of the PDF document. So they should, the element, the thing that are understood by a PDF reader, not extra data. And also nothing with a specific. I, you, I play with schizophrenic files, so files that have different renderings on different readers, but here it's really, official stuff, I mean stuff that should work the same way on all PDF readers, in theory. So this talk is, ba is made of three relatively independent parts. So first I just look at the problem from absolutely, no, with absolutely no understanding of the PDF, just basic command line stuff. Then it will give me the fake excuse to give a basic introduction of, on the PDF file format. And then with the, after this introduction on the file format, look again at what can be done to hide reveal information in a PDF file. So non-technical approach. There is a documentation about being aware of reveal, uh, uh, information hidden in PDF by the NSA, but basically it's just about, it should be renamed to uh, using the right settings in Acrobat Pro to, uh, to make sure there is no hidden information that can be revealed. If you don't have the Acrobat Pro or uh, you want to do your own manipulation, this document is not for you, but still it's worth a read. And of course, uh, I share um, several and all of these PDFs, uh, handmade PDFs on my website. So the problem for that part, just an introduction and some, then some basic examples of revealing information, hiding revealing information without, without anything technical. So you try to hide elements in the PDF and you don't see them anymore. So they should be hidden, right? And the, the usual example is 
So there should be nothing, but you it's hidden in color, but of course you clear it and then there's still something. It's just, it's not because it's not there. It's invisible that it's not there for the reader and it's selectable. And it's, so you can copy paste and uh, yeah, it's still there. Um, another thing is that sometimes you actually do a selector on a slide deck and then you have some hidden command that was overlapped by a picture that the author forgot. And it's still there, and this gave you some sometimes funny result or something just stupid. So here I just made that fake slide, but there are actually other stuff. Where is it? Like this kind of thing. And uh, well, of course it's fake in this case, but sometimes you have funny examples. So like uh, it's that stupid footy, and you might forget about them, and you'd be surprised. You take uh, some Microsoft slides, and the slide is a picture, and then you don't see. Or oh, okay. let you experiment. If you have, if you found some funny result in the wild, I'd be glad to integrate them instead of a fake one. But that was funny, because and also you could use that trick if there is an image, but you also want the description of the image to be uh, indexed by uh, uh, how do you say uh, automa automated conversion, Google and whatever. Then you can also put your own content so that uh, some hidden message, Easter eggs, or just extra information on the description of the image could be there in a, in a cheap way. There is a part of the PDF format that is ready for that, I think, description of the image, but yeah, just put white text and that would also work. So another try, and then this time the text is covered. And once again, you actually see that it can be selected. So it's behind, but it's still there. And the software don't cares about what should be displayed at last, because here it's not black. You have to trust me on that. It's not in a white color, but it's just covered, but you can still select it. So as you see, hidden via overlapping shape is behind it. And even better, if you're fed up of the copy-paste thingy, yeah, you just use PDF to text, and you'll get the whole file, even with the pseudo layout option, which is even better. So you have, still have the right elements at the right position. So why bother, you know? Not very technical, but that's how hackers reveal information from documents, from about Iraqi war. Of course, there's an option in PDF that is supposed to prevent people to copy-paste text. And here you see there is a security setting, you have the secure stuff, and you're not able to copy-paste. But it's, as you can see, it's there, it's in the memory of the reader. It's just if that is telling you, you're not allowed now, but it's been decrypted, so it's not really protected. And in practice, first, some readers just ignore that. Evans just doesn't care, <laughs> you copy, it says no problem. Or it's a funny one. You can print it as a PDF as PDF from with Chrome, for example. So you print to PDF. You still get a PDF with the whole structure. It's not rendered, but the protection is gone. Oops, I forgot to put the setting. Or you just use QPDF with the decrypt option. <laughs> of course, but that's for hackers, obviously. So you open your protected document. You print. You save as print. And then the new document, no problem, no limitation. And, and you can see it's still selecting stuff, so it's still well thought, right? Sometimes it happens that you have a PDF document and you op open and copy paste and you have some completely corrupted garbage. It's not protection, it's just incompatibility. Thanks for Kurt for understanding what the problem was. We'll see that later. So just try with another reader. That could be you abused, but first it's not easy to implement. And in the end, it's easy to recover content because it's not a real protection. So here's an example. You open in Sumatra, you copy paste, you have this. And here you open with Chrome. You see that it has this little warning of bad compatibility. And this is complete garbage. But if you see, it's just a substitution cipher. Maybe some crypto friends will prefer this version. <laughs> it turns out it's a crypto document. So maybe that's not a coincidence. But it's only with Chrome in some case. We'll see that later. So it's not really a protection, but if you think, Oh my God, it's protected or it's because, no, it's probably involuntary and just try with another reader and you're good to go. So the last one, is it hopeless to protect or go against copy paste? This time it's an overlapped image. And for some reason, they decide that you are not able to select image and copy paste once they're covered. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. So you cannot select the image that is underneath because selecting yeah, I'm not sure it makes sense, but anyway, you cannot select the image and export it. 
in practice. So if you, but still the image is still in the document. So with a standard tool, you can ex ex extract it without any problem. So PDF images or new tool, and you say extract all the image, and suddenly you have the secret document in front of you. Oh, awesome. Excellent. So see, it's not really a protection. So quick conclusion on that non-technical part. Text can be copy, copied, copied, copied. Images can be extracted. The select all tricks often works. Not always, but really first, it's the first thing to test. And instead of select all, just PDF to text and you'll get all the text with the layout instantly. And sometimes, and if it doesn't work, like in the case of image, the secrets may still be recovered. So before we go to more advanced trick, it's required to go into PDF internals. So the second part of this talk is a introduction to the PDF file format. So I made a poster, I didn't mention that I make poster. So if you want to get the poster and pr print it yourself, it's available here. And if you want to order a print and I'll get some money from it, then feel free to vote. So I made those posters as in, there's no more excuses for people not to know their basics about the file format. <laughs> so let's look at a very simple example. It's simplified, but it's real example. And yeah, PDF are usually much more complex, but at, at least it works and it's almost compatible. So that's a hello world in PDF. So what we can see immediately is that here it's mostly text, but suddenly we have binary and mostly text again. So this is exactly this. PDF file is text-based and it's white space tolerant. So usually it wouldn't care if you add some more spaces or some new lines. So it's really, uh, uh, really yeah, tolerant to edit manually. And there are binary streams in the middle. And so, for example, if you just add a few interspaces or whatever you comment here, the file will likely still work and or will require very little adjusting to be able to, uh, to be 100% correct. So PDF is really fun, uh, easy to play with. It's a very nice Lego, but sadly, it's not so good for CPU. So basically, with a text editor that still allows binary stuff inside, like a Notepad++, you can just edit it op open. And that's how people should open their PDF in a text editor. Yeah, that's, uh, that's beyond me why people use PDF reader. So <laughs> as a recommended environment, you, you can, uh, if you want to experiment, I suggest that you have the text editor and Sumatra on the other side, because single Sumatra is very lightweight and single file view. And also, when you, whenever you do a change and you save, Sumatra will update the, ch the, sing the change immediately. Of course, to be able to update everything, you will need to decompress. We'll see that later. And also, when you edit your stuff, you can, for example, use QPDF or PDF Info <coughs> to, to check where you made a mistake, why suddenly your file doesn't open anymore. So, for example, here you have the Hello World file, and you just edit here, and you type Buy, you save, and immediately Sumatra updates with your changes. That's really handy to, to poke around and to experiment with PDF. So PDF structure, there's a header, small sign the signature, the body made of objects, then cross-reference table, the trailer, the ref pointer, and the file signature. We'll see that what it means. So to look, look again at the file, so there's a PDF signature, so which also gives the, num the version number, so 10 to 17. And then there's this small garbage here, I'll zoom. Is this, this is just to tell text editor that what is coming next may not be ASCII. So you just put four non ASCII random bytes. That's a hell of a standard. <laughs> but that's how it is. So it doesn't, it's not required. But it's there most of the time. <laughs> I mean, thanks for the love, Adobe. <laughs> okay, so then you have the objects. So objects. They have all this declaration. One zero obj, two zero obj, three zero, and so on. And they start, they end with end obj, and then they start, they have this in the middle. So between the obj and the end obj, they have the content of the object. So the number, the generation, and the content itself. Uh, yeah, generation is, I'll mention that later, is usually zero. So you have an object number, zero, obj, some stuff, end obj. Next object, and so on. 
Then you have this cross-reference table. So it's just a table that gives, so this one, it says the first object is at offset this, it's at offset 68. Second object is at object 51. So it's just to give the reader the offset of each object. So, so first, if it's absent, usually they tolerate that. <laughs> and also there is a really stupid thing that each line should be 20 characters. So if you're using Unix new lines, because uh, PDF is tolerant to all kinds of new lines uh, format, then you should have a space at the end of the line. And I had many files that were corrupted because there was a missing space at the end of the line. I said it's why space tolerant, that's the exception. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the trailer. So the trailer starts a bit. It has a trailer keyword. Then it has another object structure. Okay. And it importantly, it redefines the root object of the first object that should be the, the root of everything else. So it's the, the one that points to the, to the root of the file. And the size of the trailer is the, num the amount of objects that have to be manipulated. It's not the length of the trailer itself. And then you have the second part of the trailer, actually, even though it doesn't look like it's the trailer, this just says, this is the end of line. So you have the starts cross ref, statics ref, then the offset, which is the offset to here, and then this end of line uh, keyword. End of, file. Hmm? End, of file. end of file. Thanks. And again, if this is missing, this is okay, but in practice, but yeah, that's how theory is. So the basic type to understand, basic type to understand this. So first, the literals. So the string is made, there are commas. Hex has angle brackets, and this is a new line comment. There are other types, but they, don't, they are not important here. So for example, these two files are equivalent. So here you have the hello world as a string. And here, this is the exact same, same thing, but here the, this is defined as hex. A very, very funny fact is that this is an illusion of clarity because you can actually put a space or a new line between two nibbles of the hex in PDF. So you have the four, new line, new line, new line, eight, and this will still work. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Who needs to put nibbles together? <laughs> okay, uh, object reference. It's an important concept. It's more very uh, particularly because it kind of breaks the standard logic of visual parsing. So you basically you give an object and a generation and an R. So basically you see it here. You have this two zero R, and this is not three elements two zero and R, but this is suddenly seen as, this is the reference to object two, zero. So this, even though there are white spaces and no brackets, no uh, parentheses, this is actually just a single element. And this is the exception in PDF parsing. So it's a very important to understand that, uh, we'll see later, but this is an array with four elements. And this is an array with one element, and this element is reference to object three, zero. And remember that this, the generation number, the second number is 99% of the time. It's actually very hard, zero. It's very hard to find a PDF in the wild that has this number not set to zero. Okay. So um, basically this will replace the reference to, or point, it's a, you could say it's a, it's a reference, so it's a pointer to the actual object itself. Some contents cannot be in line put directly, so they have to be reference, like parents and kids, we'll see later. You, you, they have to be pointers, and you cannot put directly the parents together with the kids. This is not good. <laughs> so once again, the generation is usually null in practice, and uh, this kind of breaks the logic of uh, sequential reading of the PDF. This is the exception. Well, hmm, there are plenty of exceptions. So for example, here you have a 57, and if we just replace this 57 with a, some object number reference, and then we have this object number. We have this object that is declared here, object, and just have 57. This is equivalent. So instead of reading 57, it will read, okay, I will read now what's in object 354. And in 354, I just have this 57. It's replaced nicely. This is also very often used if you have the, an object and its length will be actually referenced later so that you can update it later. So two examples. Names, names, they are like uh, symbols in Ruby. So 
basically they are all those stuff that start with a, a backslash. So uh, pages, kids, they are just the standard keywords of the PDF stuff. It's case sensitive. In practice, it's camel case. And if you just replace, uh, if you just replace, for example, pages with the lower case, it will be just be ignored by default for forward compatibility. So this will not, this will might break the rendering, but the file might still be valid. So it's very useful when you just want to disable temporarily one stuff without remember just, but instead of deleting it, you just want to turn it off temporarily. It's still there. You just replace the first letter and then it will be absent because it will be ignored by the reader because that's uh, how it should be. And it, but it's still physically rem uh, remember. So we'll see that in practice later. So that you can still remove an element without actually having to update all the offsets if you want your file to be comfortable. Arrays, uh, yeah, it's quite easy. So square brackets. So as I said before, this is actually one value because this is a reference to object three zero. But in all the other cases, you don't need a separator, and this is actually four values. Or zero. So no big surprise, except that this reference syntax is still a bit unusual. Dictionaries, so sequence of name, then a value. So here, the object one sets pages to 20R, and then object two here is a dictionary with three names that are and their values is the array 30r so reference to object 30 account set to one and type set to pages which is again a keyword usually when it's not something of the format there's no backslash when it's something of the format there's a backslash in front of it and it's camel case it's a forward slash yeah oh sorry yeah Ooh. <laughs> yeah i can say that uh, uh, I'm the one responsible for Travis Goodpeed said he, he tweeted once. It took me so long time, but I eventually accepted that people using a backs, uh, backslash as a path delimiter are people. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I checked and just some minutes before I had pushed on GitHub <laughs> with, the, with the Windows backslash. <laughs> Oops, too late to. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> backslash. Yeah. So I'm. A mistake, sorry, I'm not a, almost not a people. <laughs> so thanks for that. Yeah, I even actually mix and match myself, slash and backslash, as in definition now. So object references, just as another example I mentioned. So we have pages 20R, which is pointing or equivalent, but it's not, well, it's just <laughs> pointing to. And the, the content of 20R is, is this dictionary, so it's as if you would replace with 20R with the content of 20 and itself kids as a content to put so it's actually just pointer references but it's still in many re you could just copy paste this link and if the objects are not enforced to be in line or not then this will work so binary streams is also an important fact binary stream they so they start with the usual object declaration i'll do zoom then, so for, then you have the usual object declaration. Then after this, actually the parameters for the stream. Then you have the stream keyword, the stream content itself, and the end stream keyword and object keyword. Oh uh, yeah, and return character in practice. Yeah, that's all. And the stream data is not interpreted at object level. So you could put as you as you saw, or you could put uh, some whatever code, a zip file. If the PDF, if this object is not important to the the PDF parsing to be the rendering of the PDF document, it's actually okay. And we use that a lot of POC GTFO, where you can use the PDF LaTeX stuff to declare suddenly a stream object as you want and point it to your zip file so that you will embed a PDF, a zip file in, or some hidden data in your, uh, in your PDF. So if it's the, the content doesn't really matter at this point. This is just ignored by the parser at the high level. Uh, of course, except if this is actually referenced somewhere else by the by the structure of the document. So uh, stream parameters, as you see, so the parameters, there's the filter that is set to flat decode and the length set to 57 and then the content of the binary itself, the content of the stream itself. 
uh, the filters can have whatever values, and they can even change cascade these encodings. We'll see what it means, what, you, what are the possibilities. And then, at the moment of rendering, each filter is, deco is doing its stuff in cascade, and then the final data, it's only what is important to the final rendering of the document. So for example, so streams, they can, be, they can use whatever encoding they want. It's only the final result that is important. So for example, here we have my, my previous example with the hello world. We could just force it to be zipped, so that's a deflate algorithm. And so it becomes binary, but we said that's a zip algorithm. And because once the zip and the uh, deflated, this would become this. This is equivalent for the rendering of the document. Or we could use another filter. ASCII hex decode is the one that turns the binary into their hex equivalent. So now the document could become ASCII only. And this is once again equivalent. We just added another. So it's zip and on top of that, hex representation. So the standard filters known, so the decoding, the, the zip, the deflates, and then the ASCII hex. So that can provide easier text editing, so no more binary characters in your stuff. And new tool even, even has a specific option to turn everything into ASCII hex decode so that your document is uh, pure ASCII. No more binary stuff. Another filter is more important than the other one, DCT decode. Uh, PDF doesn't allow ping to be stored natively but allows JPEG to be stored entirely, even the header. So you just put the JPEG and you use this filter and it will handle the whole JPEG file, not just data, uh, natively. That's how JPEG is supported natively in PDF, but for ping, it needs to be supported to bitmap. It is to be uh, converted to bitmap. Even worse, transparency in ping, <laughs> there is two maps. Right, two pictures, one for the picture and one for the transparency map. So storing JPEG is, uh, you don't waste a byte and storing ping or any other file format is a nightmare, especially with transparency. That's awesome. You also have some internal integrated support for crypto stuff, as if for AES. Uh, yeah, maybe it was updated since, but that's not really important here. So let's put it together now that we have all the structures and types, how the file is actually passed. So first, check the signature at the start. That's in theory, right? <laughs> then, and the file is located. Then with the start xref, it gives us a pointer to the cross-reference table. The cross-reference table gives the offset of each object. Then just before the start xref, there's a trailer, which is passed as an object but it's not a usual object, but still it gives you the root, and the root is the first object that will be the top, the, yeah, the root of the hierarchy, and the size, which means the number of objects in the cross-reference. Then each object has passed, so the root object, then it has a reference to, uh, maybe a zoom, I don't know. It has a reference to the object two as a page, the, pa the pages as kids as a, in an array, as a reference, then, um, the, you see the, the kids, the first kid of the, the pages object is object three, and it's, it's a good, it's a good child. It, it, it remembers its parent as being of two. And then this is actually a page. This defines a page. You see type page. Here we have type pages and now have type page. And the content of this page is defined in this binary stream object number four. Uh, yeah, so this page defines some dimensions, the content as a stream object, and it also defines the font that it will, that it's gonna use. And then the final object of the parsing only required for this file, the object four contains the stream which describes the pages. So we have, it's once again text. So big, BT is big in text. Then it defines, use the font that it was declared here with the size 110. Then move your cursor to 10, 400 and output the string hello world. So TG is the display string, TD is move cursor, and TF is select font, and then end text. And this is how the page is totally rendered. So remember, this is a strict minimum, and someone here knows what I think, has a smile on his face, because typical PDF embeds much more information. I generated a couple of hello world, simple hello world with a 
Google, Open Office, whatever, and you get five kilobytes, while those ones are uh, 600 bytes, I don't remember. But yeah, you can much more data, fonts, whatever, plenty. Maybe the worst is Adobe itself. <laughs> when Adobe itself, like, <laughs> you have some. Like. <laughs> so, and although in the malware world, um, it's actually much worse and a lot of stuff can be absent and it still works. So, end of file marker missing, no more cross reference table, nothing declared length, no end object keyword, a lot of stuff missing. Each reader has its own weirdness and this might still work. So, here is a good example. Hello world for Adobe in 178 bytes. So as you can see, this object, this object here doesn't have an object. The PDF is, the signature is truncated. It doesn't have a declaration of the font in the resource. There is no cross reference table. There's no statics ref table. There's no end of file. Works, no warning when opening. And sometimes it's worse. To give an example, uh, Sumatra doesn't even give, you requires the PDF signature. And uh, so I made all the presentation on that, or Chrome, you can overflow the, <laughs> the object reference. So uh, object uh, reference to uh, minus uh, 200 million is actually looping to overflow, underflowing to zero, one, two, three, etc. And yeah, Chrome is probably most fucked up because you can have the trailer inside the object, the other objects in a comment. Yeah. <laughs> so now we have some understanding of the basics of file structure, the relation between objects, how the file is parsed and how the pages are rendered. It's not covering a lot, but this is enough to play with PDF internals to go back to our PDF secrets technical perspective. So of course you saw that copy pasting and extracting image could work, but yeah, we know that's possible, but I was thinking, what? how could we develop our own method or maybe our method of automated extraction or own method of hiding the stuff we want to... And anyway, there's no reason, just play creatively with PDF internals. That's uh, what is important in life. So easy PDF editing, you have your PDF you want to play with. So first, decompress, uh, not strings, should be streams, I think. A PDF, so with PDFTK can Q or QPDF. QPDF is very nice because it has this mode, the QPDF, the QDF mode, where it reorganizes the PDF structure in the most logical way. So suddenly you have all the pages and even gives you comments like, this is the content of pages, blah, blah. So it, then you reorganize the PDF. So it's, uh, I should say it's the hack me please mode, <laughs> the hack me happily mode. It's really handy. You have your PDF, whatever, use this mode with some extra parameters maybe to make it even better. And then you have a PDF that is really much more comfortable to edit with. So for example, length are not inside, but reference as external objects. So you can edit your object, then update the length afterward. Really, yeah, it's really nice to, to play uh, hands-on with PDF file format. So you take your PDF, the what you want to study, even if it's a official PDF, bloated every, and it will be nicely formatted and organized with QPDF, QDF mode. That's really, yeah, very nice. Really, really good stuff. So from the previous uh, part, if you remember, uh, PDF page is a stream object that is referenced to the contents of a type page object, which is itself in the keys array of the type pages in plural, and itself pages in the root, and the root is referenced in the trailer. And the text on the page is a simple there's a string and a TG or another text operator, uh, um, a keyword in the stream object that is the content of the page. So that's how stuff appear or not. So just by removing this TG, will uh, things uh, get things to appear or not on the file. And in this case, they cannot be copy pasted if you remove this, right? So before changing the color, it was still there. Now you replace this T with a lowercase T. And now it doesn't exist anymore for the PDF reader. So it looked very easy to hide, to, mm, to reveal what was hidden by normal practice. Now you just change the case of this, op this stuff and now the text is not part of the, what should be rendered and it's gone. I mean, it's gone. It's still in the document, but the PDF reader, there's nothing more, there's nothing left to copy paste. So it's, yeah, it's quite bad. That's why this third part is interesting compared to the first one. So, for first, remove a page. So, 
if you remember, a page is a reference in the object, the kid's object. So you just remove the reference and you write it back later. So you have your object and you have the an example, you have this, image, this slide that you want to hide, but hide in a way that it's still there, but it's hidden. And here you have the kids with object six, that is reference, object 14, and object 21, and it's in the order that you see things. So you just edit the reference to object 14. I think even if you replace with a minus, uh, with lowercase r, that could be even remove it. Maybe. I usually replace it with legs. Yeah, I would do that, but maybe just replacing that might even work, and suddenly it's gone. The image is still in the reference, so it could be still extracted, but at least if you wanted to say, I mean, that's now the, at least the page is gone from most people. And uh, the copy-paste trick will not work in this case. And of course, <laughs> yeah, I forgot that one the first time, and I think that crashed Adobe. <laughs> So I removed the page, I forgot to update the page count, and that we crashed or something. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, one thing that is important is that usually when you do this operation, so with PDFTK, you can say take these pages out, it actually doesn't erase the pages you wanted not, it actually extracts the other page. So the original content is totally lost. Except if it was an image, because an image is an independent object. But at least the stream content is gone, because it didn't remove one reference. It actually took everything out. So let, images are still there, but you cannot recover your, your lost page, your hidden page, in, uh, it's a deal, unlikely. Uh, so now let's have a, an example of overlapping elements. So, you just remove the paint and text operators objects from the binary stream. It's just not objects operators. Uh, so in, in practice, very often the people edited the page and at the end they say, oh, I have to hide that. And they added the rectangle, the rectangle or whatever. So it may be possible that the rectangle operator is at the end of the stream to just to make it easier. So the paint, uh, this is not all of them, but that should work. So you have the stroke, filling, um, what else is important? Yes, yeah, stroke, yeah. So filling is, will be important for later. And there was H, okay. And then there's text string, so TG, TG, these quotes are the one that displays text. So for example, let's look at the example from before and just manually remove it. So first, you uncompress the file so that the streams are editable. And then in the content stream, the S is stroke path. So you can search with the uh, as a regular expression that I think will be instant, but this could depend on the formatting of the stream. And then you remove the S and the, the, the black border is gone. Now you locate the F, which is path filling, and you overwrite it, and now the filling is gone. And then there's a TG to display this confidential string. So funny thing is that C is ampersand, O is two, and so on, because of font mapping. But if you notice, it's uh, just a linear mapping. I mean, and anyway, there are no so many TGs in this page, and then you remove it, and then you can pretend that was the original file. <laughs> if that's what you needed. Of course, if you just wanted to extract the hidden content, okay, but now this page, it's back to what it, uh, what it was. And of course, this can be auto easily automated. As uh, you saw in the introduction, the hierarchy are uh, war uh, uh, official document, one regular expression, 700 results, 90, almost all rectangles are gone. So here it's actually much more work to remove that than the official uh, war uh, operations uh, confidential document. Another trick, thanks to Kurt. Kurt, Kurt? Um, a page, so my example was saying that the dimensions of a page is, of, is a media box, but actually PDF is far from that simple because it's for printing and they have the, all these. So I'm not kidding, the crop box, two bleed box, trim box, R box, because of all printing stuff that I don't understand. I'm just a binary guy. <laughs> and what you see, again, in a simplified way is a crop box and not just a media box. Uh, and when you copy-paste, 
are you PDF to text? Well, it depends on the version. If it's on your, only on the crop box and not outside, it might not be copy pasted. It might not be extracted. It's funny because some PDF to text version do that. Uh, they don't care. They extract everything and some do. So just an example. This other example. What you see here is actually just the crop box because the page is actually bigger, but the crop box just decided to, to remove that. And if you just disable the crop box, you see that the page was actually bigger. There's a really hidden confidential secret here. And you wouldn't be able to extract it, but you would be able to reveal it often. And in the other way, it can be a problem for incompatibility between software or some secrets could be hidden. And if you have a Mac, uh, OS X preview is bad, is famous for being bad with his handling of PDF. And if you just want to select something and extract it from a PDF to have a perfect extraction, that was a nice idea. What OS X preview does is actually not extract stuff, but just take the same document and put a crop box on it. So actually all your confidential stuff is still there. So here it's a document where there is a preview in red written on top of hello world. And the preview just shows that. But it's funny because actually when you rotate it, <laughs> the hidden content of the media box, while you were only, you were, you were th you would think that only this is presented in the page, but actually everything is still presented in the page and just the view has been reduced by the use of a crop box. And then when you rotate it, you still, uh, you still uh, see the confidential comment, uh, content. That's quite funny. So it's like two mistakes. Well, it's perfect extraction, but nothing is extracted. It's just, this is a reduced view, but all the security content, all your confidential stuff is still there. And I think that in practice, pre, uh, OS X preview should be avoided at all costs for anything PDF because they don't really care, right? Anything not viewing, just viewing. Just viewing, okay, but yeah. So if you if you care about your PDF documents, don't use uh, OS X previews or too. You know all the weirdness and you use it to your advantage. Yeah, well, if you want to, in practice for normal people, but if you want to abuse it, feel free to use OS X preview. I think that's a good message. <laughs> So it was really funny, a uh, known um, yeah, leak, major leak, if you wanted to publish confidential comment document with PDF, via PDF with uh, OS X preview. Another, uh, just the example of hidden text uh, again from before, just to see at the technical uh, level. So the color filling, that's the RGB defining the filling of the color. And also you have a rendering mode. Uh, so three in, is invisible. And this is defined the white color. So here you have, it's saying this is white color and the text is invisible. And here, if you, re you change the color to black and you put it back to normal mode, to normal running, the text is back. Uh, a technical note that you taught me, when you use OCR to actually, OCR software, they parse the image on the PDF, but they are embed the text in a hidden way so it can be referenced. The text is put back on the page, but invisible. So the text is still, it can be extracted. You still see the original image, so they combine both. That's the point of invisible text. And it's not white color, it's invisible rendering. Okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Another thing uh, that we saw earlier, um, we, more than I would have been. Oh yeah, uh, just because we saw that we could alter the content of the kids of the, of the, of the pages reference. And another thing that is not so common is the incremental updates. So incremental updates is something not much used in practice anymore, where you could just modify the further object, the, pre the previously existing object of the file, but instead of replacing and re writing the, the, the same file for performance reasons in the old times, you could, you would actually rewrite the new versions of the file and write up and a, a, a small cross reference that would New, be the new reference for those modified objects. So here in practice, we have a PDF, the same PDF example with the top secret message. And this is our content, the stream object that defines the content of the page. So we will introduce a new object, and then we will introduce the, the, the new content of the PDF so that this old content is ignored. It's still there physically, but it's not seen as the official object 4.0. So 
First, we had the new content. After the end of file, we had the new content. So the same thing, but with a non-confidential message. Then a new cross-reference. So this is already the same start. And then we say we will redefine only one object starting on number four. And here is this offset. So this just will be used in, in the con, uh, together with the previously cross-reference. This one will just override the object four. And then the trailer, similar stuff, except that is here it gives the offset of the previous cross-reference table. So just this means there was a previously a cross-reference table, so this is an incremental update. And now, at the end, again, a new cross-reference to the new one, because the old cross-reference is referenced in the, tra in the new trailer. And now, if you open the file, we have the new content is used for rendering, and the whole stuff is still present. So if we cut the page after the first end of file, because now there are two end of file marker, then the whole page goes, come, goes back. We can also do the same just to, if you want, instead to overwrite the pages object so that the kits are raised modified. So here again, the new, we have a different, uh, remove the page. This is a new object one. This is the offset, and this is the whole update. And here you have the previous page with the different, with three kids, and not two kids. Hey, I can remove a kid. Okay. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually funny because if you would find in the wild of a PDF with a prev, it means there was a hidden subversion in it. I did the search. I actually now it's incremental updates are not used. They are still supported, but not not used because saving uh, doesn't. You don't want to save uh, operation on PDF files are not so big usually. So I just found one file. It's about the secure CPU used in arcade games. <laughs> Such a coincidence. Pure coincidence, no kidding. So if you, that's the latest version. And if you go to the first version, first it has a page one on one, which is wrong. Then it was mentioning some models which had less, uh, we didn't have an internal microprobe shield, so which were less secure. And also at the same page, nothing important, but it had this mistake, printed USA. So nothing very funny, nothing confidential, but that's now incremental updates are very little used in the wild. So that's yeah. a, <laughs> they are they might be used uh, uh, un, unknowingly. Unknowingly, yeah, but it now so few. Yes. Yeah. If you edit something in Acrobat nowadays, yeah, most editing stuff you do, and you just say save, it will be become an incremental update. Really? So not so few people uh, use Acrobat after all. <laughs> maybe the mail. I only found out recently because okay. in, the, in the past years ago, you deleted pages in Acrobat and said save. Yeah. And the file would become larger instead of smaller because but, it wrote but, but, just the incremental yeah. update information at the end of the But that's file. still the case now? And this is no more the case. Oh, no this more easy no leaks. More the case now. And this is the way I tested it all the time. And I thought, ah, they, 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 they don't support incremental updates now. But if you do any other editing stuff, yeah. because people were complaining, we, yeah. we delete pages and, and the files grow. What is that? So That's a feature. So change that one mm. thing. Okay. But if you just delete it, it, it did text something. or yeah. whatever and say save, you will incrementally update it. You have to, to use save as in order to get rid of the... the Which makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if people just use save, save, save after... after and don't delete page. Yeah. And don't delete the page. Yeah, but who has a Adobe Pro beside you? <laughs> <laughs> in this room, maybe no one, but in, real, in, in the real world, yeah. Like, <laughs> real world? Mm. <laughs> Okay, so that's the best example. That's the only example of uh, incremental update in the wild that had some funny results. But yeah, nothing really con confidential. And uh, as you ma I mentioned before, there was this in the first part, there were the file when you copy paste the string, the text, it would come as a pass garbage. Quote has identified this is a subtype. This is a sub special case where there's a type three and no unicode <laughs> mapping. If you want to play with that, that could give you some pointers. But still, that's just a substitution cipher as a protection against text copy paste. So it'd probably be better and safer to disable the text operators in the stream itself, as I mentioned before. It's just 
if you wanted to know the real uh, technical reason behind this mm, problem, or if Chrome was nice enough to fix that, <laughs> if someone at Google will be watching. So, conclusion. The failure file format is just awkward. Started in 93, still being improved with uh, accessory files, right? Being uh, added in the next uh, standard or something. Yeah, the scary stuff. Yeah, two that's is probably next year. Only next year. Yeah, it's plenty of fun. So remember, but if you just want to hide or reveal secrets, at least you don't have to call to cover all the com very complex stuff. Remember, be really very careful when removing sensitive elements, even if I'm pretty sure everyone is convinced about that. And uh, it's quite easy to check if elements are still removed and overlapping doesn't work, obviously. Uh, hiding and re recovering elements is easy, it can be automated, but if someone comes up, if you come up with a very uh, different, uh, creative way of hiding temporary stuff and revealing it, then why not? It's just opening the, the play, a new playground for people to play with PDF internals or future city of flags, stegano flags. If you have any suggestions, new hiding techniques, uh, new automated revealing techniques, um, or if you ever found a document that was really a pain to reveal its secrets, yeah, why not challenging me? Or I was thinking maybe if we split the fonts of the drawing, the drawing of the fonts into sub uh, uh, individually drawn elements that could be annoying, like a kind of complex binary obfuscation. Is it worth it? I actually, a friend of mine, it was funny. Uh, one, I, his his presentation was interesting, but then I check his presentation at PDF level. I mean, which he didn't care because his presentation was not about PDF. And it turned out that all the text elements were individually rendered as images, which was making it a kind of pen to, to extract and rebuild. And of course, well, uh, I, I won't name it, but he, he was using Microsoft Office. <laughs> and uh, for him, it was transparent. So that's probably an annoying uh, feature uh, of Microsoft Office, but it turned out it was really a pain to rebuild because then well, you had to use OCR on his generated PDF to extract, to get the text. So it sh also shows that uh, PDF created with OpenOffice are just impossible to index for their content because all the text is images. And it didn't make sense. It's not like if the text was beautifully imaged. It just looked like font, but I was like, hey, there's no text in this, the whole slides. And it's not images either. It's just individual images everywhere. Does that make sense? I'm not sure, but yeah. So maybe uh, Bing indexed did, them. That's the reason. Did you say Open Office or Microsoft? Microsoft Office. He works at Microsoft. He used probably a font which had a license which doesn't allow embedding. Oh. And then the trick is to convert all the glyphs into outlines. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So. That's probably why it happened. And okay. He didn't know it, but he, he just generated PDF. With one yeah, but one even one. the font had nothing fancy. So yeah, that's actually. It could be. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, thanks for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Wow. Uh, thanks. So, thanks a lot to Kurt because yeah, it wouldn't have been uh, half as good without him, and all the other people who helped me with feedback and stuff. But yeah, thanks a lot for Kurt for all his help for all the PDF stuff here. Yeah. Thanks for your attention.